Hello. Hey. We'll be starting in just a second. It's uh, we're live, and I'm just going to be helping out our community find the link here. You are frozen, but as long that I can hear you, but you are frozen. All right, hello everyone. Welcome to this week's special event. We've got a cool guest joining us today, Product School CEO and founder, Carlos. Uh, today we'll be asking him some questions at the end and he'll be going over the product book and telling us some more information on product management tips to help you land a product management job. Um, so firstly, Carlos, would you like to introduce yourself? Absolutely. Well, thank you for having me. And uh, hello, everyone. My name is Carlos, and I am the founder and CEO of Product School. Uh, Product School is a school that teaches product management, plain and simple. Uh, we started uh, four years ago with the simple idea that a lot of people that work in tech or are about to work in tech would like to understand a little bit of everything and kind of be a generalist instead of being a specialist. And um, we started offering classes here in San Francisco part time. So both software engineers or other folks coming from the business side of things could uh, learn a little bit more about what's outside of their specialty and uh, hopefully get a job as a product manager at a top company. So um, my background is as a software engineer first, um, and that's actually inspired me to become a, a product manager because even though I was good enough at coding, I never really loved it. I always uh, ask myself, okay, but like, why am I coding this? Like, how can I connect uh, the technology side of things with the business side of things? How can we build businesses around technology? And at that time, and this is maybe 10, 11 years ago, the, the word product management wasn't that popular. So I feel like I was doing it without really knowing how to define it. So uh, after four years working as a software engineer for multiple companies, I decided to start my first company. And I've started three companies throughout my life, all of them in the education space. And I've always done it the same way. So as the, having a technical background always helped me uh, get first things done because obviously I knew how to build a website or a mobile app. And obviously as the companies grow and, and then you need to focus more on recruiting, fundraising, sales, ops, and many other functions, I had to grow the team. Uh, so I, I think that I started as kind of the first engineer then I had to grow in an engineering team and learn how to manage an engineering team. Then obviously we had to add design, marketing and other areas. So I feel like I was a product CEO and um, I also had to hire product managers when the, the, the product was big enough and I had to fully delegate that part. So I learned on the go. And that's something that uh, I always felt like there should be a better way to do it. You know, like I also went to business school, but I felt like the same way engineering school was probably too low level and specific, um, business school was too high level and strategic. Like, yes, there are amazing books and professors there, but nothing really tangible uh, that I could apply to my technology businesses. So I feel like product school is right in between an engineering school and a business school. So people from both sides can come and learn a little bit more about what they need in order to become great uh, managers in tech. So this uh, concept uh, exploded and we opened a total of 15 campuses worldwide. So now you can take any of our classes in San Francisco, Los Angeles, Seattle, Austin, Denver, New York, uh, Boston, Chicago. We also have two international locations in Toronto and London. And we recently opened an online campus. So students who don't live in any of our 15 locations, they can also take our classes live online in real time. So the instructors that teach uh, in San Francisco, New York are the same people who teach live online. 
and there was kind of a core concept that always resonated with with me when I wanted to build a school that I wish I had had uh, 10 years ago when I started learning about all of this, which was that for me, being a good instructor means you have to be a good practitioner, especially in technology. Things change so fast that I don't believe that someone who has been working as a full-time teacher for 10 years really understands what's happening right here, right now. So all of our classes are part-time on weeknights or weekends. This way, all of our instructors can keep their full-time jobs as senior level product managers at companies such as Google, Facebook, Uber, Airbnb, and so on. And also, all of our students can keep their full-time jobs. This is a school that doesn't require you to stop your life or quit your job. This is something that you can do on the side. Because if you're really serious about breaking into product management, it's always going to be easier if you do so while you keep your job. So anyway, this is the concept that we started four years ago. It's, it's grown a lot the same way product management itself has grown a lot. And I'd be happy to discuss more specifics about product management, not just uh, in terms of the classes that we offer in our school, but also in terms of the, the book that we recently launched and uh, gives you an overview about how to go about working as a product manager for a tech company. Awesome. So yeah, if you guys didn't know, Carlos, the author of the product book, The Ultimate Guide for Product Managers, just launched today on Product Hunt. You can actually <laughs> find the link in the description, the description of, um, of the Facebook, Facebook video. Right? 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 But uh, on top of that, Carlos, what would you like to tell us about this book? Why did you write it? Who did you write it for? What was your intention or goal in writing it? Mm -hmm. So that's a really good question. I mean, if you look out there, you'll see that there are tons of resources about uh, product management both about how to work as a product manager, but also how to get a job as a product manager. The problem is that there's so much stuff out there that it's really hard to filter and understand what's the good stuff versus what's just, you know, typical uh, article out there. So I wanted to create something very, very tactical and specific that breaks down the job of a product manager and shows you the framework that most of the product managers use on different software companies on a daily basis. Obviously, each company will have their own variation, but at the end of the day, most of the software companies follow the same good practices. And I found in the market many books about how to hack your career, how to get a job. And they are mostly focused on you know, how to optimize your LinkedIn profile, how to answer a certain question in an interview. But I mean, even though that's important, there's a step before that that we can't forget, which is you need to learn what product management is and how to actually do your job before then you can go out there and, and, and sell yourself and, and try to, to grow in your career. So this book is mostly focused on the first part, like what product management is and how it works, what are the good practices, the tools, and very specific examples of some of the best companies out there. So you can really apply these little nuggets to your, to your daily um, activities, either if you're working as an existing product manager and want to grow your career, or if you want to become a product manager. Awesome. Before we move on to our next part about a little more in depth on the book, just remember guys, post your comments or post your questions for Carlos in the comments and I'll ask him at the end and we can have a little back and forth discussion here. But um, so Carlos, what other, what's your favorite part of the book? Or do you have anything you'd like to read from the book or any, uh, any favorite quotes or something that you'd, you'd like to tell product managers? I will just read something uh, very short that um, you can find on the back cover of the book. Uh, it, it's funny. It says, no, nobody asked you to show up, uh, which is very true. Because when you look at a technology company, it makes sense that you need to have engineers because they obviously are the ones who build the product, the ones who code. And you understand why you need them. At the same time, you have designers that also add the, the customer experience and the layout to the, to the final product. And you understand why you need to hire a designer. You can also understand why you need to hire a marketer or a salesperson because you need to promote and sell that product. You need to acquire more users and make sure existing users use your product more. So those three functions are pretty obvious, but why would you need a product manager, right? Like, <laughs> I think that is the key question. And, and first of all, the, the real answer is that you don't need it. <laughs> At the very beginning, when the product is small enough, uh, 
either a founder or you know an engineer or a marketer can take over and, and own the vision of the product. But at some point, as the companies grow, you are going to need to build a dedicated function that focuses on connecting these different areas and make sure that everybody's pushing in the same direction. Awesome. So uh, moving on from there, let's say, do you have any tips or favorite things you would really like to tell a product manager and something something technical or something that uh, well, that's your favorite that's helped you out throughout the years? Can you hear me? I think I lost you, Carlos. Can you repeat the question again, please? Ah, sorry, there you are. Do you have any tips or like what are your top three things you tell a product manager or something? Um, yeah, so tips there are advice? three things that uh, we've seen consistently across the board. Like obviously we work, we've worked with thousands of students. Some of them come from an engineering background and they need more help on the business side. We work with a lot of people that come from a business background. Imagine management consultants, uh, project managers, uh, investment bankers and marketers. They probably need more help with the technical front. So. We've seen that there are three skills that are always the same pattern in terms of what tech companies are looking for. So number one is the technology background. With technology background, I don't mean that everybody has to have a software engineering, a computer science degree and know how to code like a professional, not at all. But it's true that if you want to work in tech and you want to be a tech manager, you need to speak tech. And the level of tech that you need to speak varies depending on the the, the complexity of the, the product that, that your company is building. So you are working on a super hardcore uh, artificial intelligence bot. Well, that would probably require an additional level of um, expertise. So maybe those companies would be looking at product managers with actual computer science degrees or even PhDs in analytics, math, or, or so on. But in general, most of the software products, and when I mean pro software products, I'm talking about websites and mobile apps, you can think of an e-commerce site, you can think of a marketplace, or there are many other social networks, there are so many other examples. Um, you are going to need to have a minimum level of uh, tech, tech expertise that will allow you to have a conversation with your engineering team at every single level. As high level as what our users need and how to create um, a use case, to a deep level in terms of discussing architecture and other technologies. Obviously, as a product manager, you can't always come with the right solution to absolutely everything, but you should be able to understand the different trade-offs and what's going on and, and be able to communicate and earn the respect of your engineering team. So if you come from a technical background per se, you have an edge in that skill, but if you come from a different background, let's say business or design, you can definitely acquire that piece. So that's number one. Number two is domain expertise. This is especially helpful for people who are trying to break into product management and don't have that official product management title on the resume yet. So let's say that you are a software engineer or a marketer at a company that uh, is a marketplace like Airbnb, and you need to um, you want to become a product manager either at your current company or somewhere else. Well, even though you don't have that official title yet. That doesn't mean that you don't know anything about product. Product management has a lot of overlap with many other functions. So in the case of an engineer, you probably know a lot about how a marketplace works. Uh, maybe you are working on the mobile app experience, so you also understand mobile products. Um, and B2B is mostly a B2C product, business to consumer. So you probably understand as well how B2C works. So those are three different variables that you can apply when you go out there and, and try to apply for a product management position and explain that, hey, even though my official title is software engineer, I have some experience working in this type of domain expertise, or I have some management experience working just with engineers, but you know, leading specific um, areas of development. So that's number one, because if you look at most of the jobs out there, they all require some sort of experience. And um, you always need to find a way to kind of put all your previous experience value, even though your official title wasn't product management per se. And the same logic applies to someone who comes from a design or business background. So you always have to look at, okay, what are some parallels that I can draw between what, I, what I'm doing right now and where I want to be? Because reality is that if you are not a product manager yet and want to become a product manager, it's always going to be easier for you 
to get a product management job within your same industry than if you try to switch jobs and industries at the same time. Uh, look at this as a matrix. So it's always easier to give, take one step at a time. If for whatever reason you really hate your industry and you want to get out, uh, maybe a good strategy could be to do a horizontal move. So you continue working as a marketing manager or a software engineer in a totally different industry. And then from there, try to take the next step towards a product management role. And, and we can talk more about different stepping stones, like other positions that are close enough to a product management role that could also help you get there. And then that was kind of my second um, tip. Of tip. So first one is technical expertise. Second one is domain uh, in uh, expertise. And then the last one is communication skills. Here is where business folks have an edge. Um, at the end of the day, as a product manager, you are not going to be coding, nor selling, nor designing. <laughs> so, you're not, so what are you going to be doing? You're going to be communicating all the time and translating uh, things from one thing to the other, making sure everybody's on the same page. Um, you speak the same different the same language uh, that, as designers, engineers, and marketers. So um, you need to feel comfortable communicating uh, hard decisions and being also a translator between between other teams. If uh, you have experience coming from consulting, marketing, you have experience talking with different clients and team, that's great, that gives you an edge. If you maybe come from an engineering background, you don't have the opportunity to interact with other teams on a daily basis, that's not a problem, you will have to learn it. But in my experience, helping students uh, get into product, those three skills, like technical background, domain expertise, and communication skills are the, the, the key ones for, for pretty much any company hiding out there. Awesome. awesome. The go-to go skills. Thank you for, for, for writing writing this. this. So we also have some questions from our community. As I mentioned earlier, oh, we got a bunch popping up here now. Let's see. I'll show one on screen here. How to show value slash convince your manager to create a product manager role within your company while none existed at uh, what type of case or business case would be suitable to highlight the need for a product manager? Oh, that's a that's a really good question. And uh, I should touch upon that. So <laughs> in general, you look at most of technology companies out there, they don't start with a product manager position. They, they, they have a small engineering team, maybe one or two designers, maybe a couple of business people, and that's good enough at the very beginning. It's only when you get to around seven to 10 software engineers when you feel like systems are breaking and you need a dedicated product manager. So first of all, if your company is like at startup level, uh, you may not need, or it will be hard for you to justify why the company is a product manager. It's only, you know, let's assume now that you are at that stage where you're in between seven to 10 engineers, you realize that the person who is kind of in the middle is doing other things and is, uh, is drawing. So at that point, uh, then is when you usually make your first hire. And um, I've seen most of the companies um, promoting an, an existing employee as the first product manager because that person cares about the product and understands how the dynamics of the team work. And, you know, like it's kind of the, the uh, an official product person. So that could be a good option for you if you are at that stage to, to explain that, hey, you know, like I know a lot about, let's say, engineering. I think that I know enough about what's going on in marketing and design because this is my these are my teammates and I think at this point it's necessary to have someone who is full time thinking about strategy and, and and the general direction of of the company. So that could be a, a good stepping stone. Now, obviously, you can't just build your product team based on uh, promoting internal employees. Maybe none of your employees want to become product managers, and that's fair. So. The, the product team is also going to grow and grow and grow. In general, we've seen that a healthy ratio, engineer versus product manager, is usually seven to one, between seven and 10 engineers per product manager. So keep in mind that you will always need to have more specialists, so more engineers, designers, and marketers than product managers, because at the end of the day, the specialists are the ones who are getting things done. You are in the middle of it coordinating. Um, so that's that's kind of a way to go about it. Obviously. Larger organizations, uh, in, you can find uh, other roles such as um, product manager, senior product manager, director of product, uh, VP of product, chief product officer, uh, and so on. Cool. Thank you for that response. <laughs> uh, moving on. 
Uh, let's find a good question for you. This is one I've actually always been curious about. What are the main differences between product manager, product owner, business analyst in terms of working with CFT? Mm -hmm. That's a, another key question here. So um, along the lines of what I was talking about before, so when the, the product team is, is, is growing and there is more than one product manager to take care of everything, you will see that you will also need some people to support these specific areas of the team. So at some point, the product manager will need someone to help connect product with marketing. At some point, that same product manager will need someone to help connect product with design and also product with engineering. So in general, and by the way, titles are confusing. Some companies call this in a different way, but we can all agree that a product marketing manager is that person who connects product with marketing. A product designer is the person who connects product with design. And then a project manager or technical product manager is the person who connects product with engineering. So obviously this can get more and more complicated as, as the company or the product grows. So within that, that area that, that connects engineering with product, you can see all the roles such as business analyst, scrum master, project manager, technical product manager, and so on. Um, but just to give you like a, you know, a, a common definition, the business analyst is that liaison between engineering and product. This is the person who may have some coding responsibilities, but for the most part, this is the person in charge of keeping track of the software development process. Um, hopefully that company is using an agile methodology such as Scrum or Kanban. So this person is using a tool to make sure that we have all the user stories created, the backlog is rightly, uh, is prioritized, everybody knows what they're doing, we are assigning uh, different um, points of effort to each uh, user story that engineers are developing, we have all the different validation criteria, so pretty much is the person who is very, very tactical, making sure that what was discussed in the roadmap discussion, like once we agree on what's going to happen two, three, four months from now, that project manager or business analyst is going to make sure that you are getting things done on a daily basis and being the point of contact between engineers and the product team. So I've seen a lot of business analysts and project managers break into product because they're almost there. And actually in some companies where the definitions are not that clear, in reality, they're they are acting as the product manager. Just with a different title. <laughs> cool. So. Let's find another question for you here. Um, here we go. In your opinion, how does the product management approach for an internal product differ from product management at a consulting firm for clients? Mm -hmm. That's a very good question as well. So by definition, if you look at um, if you look at the product, a product is constantly evolving, right? That like you have multiple iterations. So um, when you're working on an agency or in a consulting firm, you usually have an external client who hires you to, that, to do something very specific. And the way agencies or consulting, firm, consulting firms charge is by the hour. So before anybody starts executing, you need to gather all the different requirements, plan, define the scope, um, understand how many resources uh, you have to allocate. And then this way you can break this down in terms of uh, price per hour, which is usually like the first iteration, um, which, which makes sense. So in most of those agencies, there are no product managers. They are more like project managers because the external client is, ex is, is, is helping you define what you need. And then once you go through that, once you do that full iteration, then usually either do the planning again to do another iteration or jump to another client. While when you're working on a software company that owns a product, let's say Uber, Airbnb, uh, just to give you some big examples, that product never ends. You, are, you own it and you're constantly iterating it. So the same person who participated in that first iteration is also participating in future and future and future iterations. So by definition, a product manager makes sense in a company that has a, their own products and they're constantly evolving it versus a project manager usually works or it makes more sense in a consulting firm or 
web development agency because once you're done with one client, you jump to the next one. So actually, we've seen a lot of uh, people that work in agencies or consulting firms trying to switch into product because you know they, they get attached to something and they want to make sure that they can build something and not only be in the early stages of, of uh, whatever product their, their clients are asking them to do. Okay, awesome. Well, we're wrapping up just about. We just hit uh, 11.45 here. So um, if you guys did like this format of asking questions a little differently and being more one-on-one, -on -one, uh, let us know in the comments and we'd love to maybe try it out again and uh, do other special events. But other than that, Carlos, thank you so much for taking some time to join us and talk about your book. Don't forget to um, check it out on Product Hunt. We just launched today and it's, um, it's big news for us and we're really excited to, to help everyone out on their product management journey. But um, other than that, just in case you didn't know, Product School, we teach uh, product management, coding, data analytics, blockchain, and uh, digital marketing classes at 15 campuses around the world in the US, UK, and Canada. And we also have some online courses for anyone who's not in those uh, cities. And on top of that, we have some awesome online events and events at all of our campuses. So head to productschool.com and you can check them out. And you can also follow us on social media at Product School. But other than that, thank you so much, Carlos, and um, have a great day. Thank you. Bye bye. And on top of that, we have some awesome online.